Hi everyone, it's Gary Nicholson here for weatherweb.net. Look ahead video today on Wednesday the 27th of January. Thanks for watching. Now, if you watched Simon's video from yesterday, you'll know he talked about uh, the warm and cold plumes of air that uh, have been advancing across the country and will continue to do so over these next few days. Well, today we'll have a look at the jet stream charts, then just take you through the next couple of weeks uh, based on the latest GFS model forecast. Of course, the further ahead we go, the lower the confidence is, but it's a useful uh, guide just to see how the surface weather patterns will evolve and the jet stream really marking the boundary, of course, between uh, the milder tropical air masses coming from the uh, mid-Atlantic and the colder polar air masses towards the the north. So we'll start off with today, and this is the current situation, quite a strong jet stream in existence across the country, which drove the frontal system and the strong winds we've seen. And we just dip onto the cooler side of the jet. In other words, the jet stream that comes more to the south of the country to head into Thursday. So that's the cooler night coming through tonight, and the jet just weakening for a time, allowing that ridge of high pressure to give us a better day for Thursday. And of course, more details in the short range forecast in our fast forecast. Moving on into Thursday evening and through into the overnight period into Friday, Friday, the jet stream pushing back north again, allowing milder air to move back in and a strengthening jet stream as well that will deepen and develop an area of low pressure towards the northwest of Scotland. So that's through into the later part of Friday uh, and that the situation based on the jet stream there. So uh, going forwards into the weekend, uh, jet stream flow just uh, strengthening again and moving a little bit further southwards as the front goes south, uh, but it will be back north again as we head through on into Sunday here uh, as a warm front goes back north and we head on to the uh, warmer side of the jet once again. Further forwards into the new week, again a strong jet stream in place to head into Monday, a deep area of low pressure again will be to the north of Scotland, so again the risk of gales and heavy rain on western facing coasts and hills of Britain. On into the middle part of the week, we just weaken that jet slowly and just for a few days we drag down something a bit cooler uh, from the north, but as the jet stream uh, intensifies again over the Atlantic, we like to see further areas of low pressure getting in and milder air as the jet stream moves back towards the north of us. Going further forwards, just skip forwards a few days again, treat the detail with the caution by this stage. With this now moving on to around the weekend of the 6th and the 7th, and the GFS model at least showing a strengthening jet stream again across the Atlantic, uh, and this time a little bit further towards the south and generally staying there. So the indication is, and it's what we've been uh, saying for a while here at weatherweb.net, is that the further we go into February to around the 8th to the 10th or so, uh, we're generally on that colder side of the jet stream and cooler conditions probably prevailing uh, more commonly. Uh, than the milder weather we're seeing just at the moment. So that's the situation as we go towards the 10th of February. A lot of uncertainty exactly on the detail by this stage, but just looking like being a cooler pattern than we're seeing right at the moment, and less mild days getting in there. Now, a lot of long-range forecasting is, of course, done by computer models and the various uh, computations and uh, equations and analyses that they go through to generate forecasts. But uh, the method of analog forecasting as well is one that we can sometimes dabble in, uh, which really puts a bit more human perspective on it and uh, basically treats uh, the forecast of the future uh, based on things that happened in uh, more recent past or recent times when the atmospheric situations are similar to what they are now. And I've just put together a few charts for the next few months, March, April and May, with just a few thoughts of the spring season then based on a few years when patterns have been somewhat similar to recent times. All a little bit speculative, so treat it with some caution, but may just give some interesting ideas to see where we're going. So this chart then is for March, and this is centred over the Northern Hemisphere. North Pole is here, British Isles is under here quite small, and it's the 500 millibar anomaly heights then showing lower than normal heights in the blues and the purples. That's then out towards our west and higher than normal heights in the yellower colours across Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. So we do a battleground setting up in that situation. Uh, suggesting a jet stream that's quite a long way south in the uh, Atlantic heading towards Iberia. So areas of low pressure could be tracking well to the south and areas of high pressure uh, blocking more towards the east and the northeast of us. So a bit of a battleground with temperatures. It could be that occasionally we get milder air being drawn up from the south, but also a risk of chillier air coming in from the east and the southeast towards the British Isles. So it could be uh, that we just see some cooler outbreaks uh, persisting at time there. Now on into April, and again, all very speculative, but this suggesting lower heights, again, away towards the south, an unsettled uh, picture across Spain and Portugal, lower heights as well off the eastern side of the states. Higher pressure, higher heights is suggested as being more towards the north of the British Isles, so it could be a rather cool pattern with a flow uh, at times coming in more from an easterly direction, although being a relatively dry one with high pressure uh, not too far away. It could be that western and northwestern regions fare best in this situation for drier, warmer and sunnier weather. 
Now here's the indications for May, and bearing in mind these are the months as a whole, so we'll average things out quite a bit. By this stage we've got higher pressures, higher heights away in the mid-Atlantic, lower pressure, lower heights away towards our northwest, and a jet stream flow a little bit more back across the mid-Atlantic or the North Atlantic towards the British Isles, and could be a rather cool northwesterly affair in that sort of a setup. High pressure then is back away over Scandinavia, at lower heights as well over Central Europe could keep things rather unsettled in this part of the world. So I think overall for the British Isles it may well mean that the south is drier, temperatures not too far from the average, but cooler conditions, are almost sort of what you might call April showers uh, with uh, squally uh, bursts of rain coming down from the northwest, occasionally a little bit cooler, uh, and looks as though a more changeable month looking likely uh, on that indication at least. So a couple of different aspects there for you for the shorter or medium range forecast based on the jet stream and then some longer range thoughts using the analog method of longer range forecasting. Of course, just a few ideas and a long way off and all very speculative really, but just one that we can use to put together a picture of how we think the upcoming seasons may just develop. That's all for today. Thanks as always for watching us here at weatherweb.net and bye for now.